Okay, I'll call this meeting to order 6 p.m. First item on the agenda is review and approve the minutes from February 15th. Make a motion we approve the minutes of February 15th. Second. Motion made and seconded. Is if there's no other discussion, all those in favor, we'll do a roll call. Betty? Yes. Tom? Yes. And myself, yes. And no one else is on Zoom, so they pass. Next item is review and discuss the wages and salaries of the following positions. And the first one up is creditor slash collector and the request there. Can I get a little background first? I'm sure. Okay. Um, so as you know, um, we had a vacancy in a treasure collector um, position, and, and the we went through an interview process with the third committee and the select board um, appointed Amy Schrader as a treasure collector. Um, and there was, um, I guess, an agreement, well, a request from Amy, an agreement with the select board to discuss um, a wage request uh, that would uh, be submitted afterwards. So that's what Amy had submitted. Any wage um, adjustments, I think, are going to be retroactive to the first day of employment, which was, I don't recall, March 1st. March 1st. Um, so that is, um, that's how this got before the personnel committee. So that's the background. Susan just texted me. She's trying to get on her computer, and I said, "Hey, Susan, now." Yeah. Okay. Um, so Brian did just fill you in. Um, I'm hoping that you guys read the memo I sent on um, March 7th. Um, so right now, the treasurer collector position is at $29.36 um, cents an hour. I'm requesting that it goes to $34 per hour. Um, it's a 30 hour a week. Work week. Um, I have been in the assistant treasurer collector position for the last year and a half, and it's become, and as I've been working with the previous treasurer collector, um, it's become evident to me that the treasurer collector positions that we compared to on the salary survey, some of them, the, the work um, duties that we do aren't that comparable. Um, so, what I did is I um, I pulled out the salaries on the wage salary report that we would compare the most to. And I know one is, is slightly high, which is Conway. And I know that's a bit out of our reach at, um, for this town, um, but it would be Hackfield and Conway. Um, those are both two towns that take care of the school vendor warrants and payroll and um, basically does the HR for their towns, um, which is what we do here in Whiteley. Um, Shelburne, Buckland, and Ashfield do not do that for, um, that's not part of their treasure collector job duties for their town. Um, so what I did is I took basically kind of met in the middle of Hatfield and Conway, um, and that's how I came up with the $34 an hour. Um, I do, I am coming into the job with some experience from being the assistant treasurer collector for the last year and a half. Um, I am well-versed in payroll and, um, definitely with townspeople. Um, so I would like to at least think I'm bringing something to the table than being entirely new to the position. Um, but that is basically how I came up with the $34 an hour. Okay. Um, is any of our Members have any questions for Amy? <laughs> Joyce, you're all set. Are... Yeah. We said we would address this after we had made a decision on who it was going to be. So I kind of knew it was coming. I, I would say the same thing that we had talked about this in theory um, that we knew it may it may be necessary necessary to revisit this. Um, 
Betty, you have any input? No, I, I, I agree she should get more money. She does a lot. I make a motion we approve it to change it to $34 an hour. I'll second that. Okay, I have a motion made and seconded. And it's going to go from 30 to 33 hours a week, right? That is my second request. Um, I can definitely go into more detail if you'd like me to. Um, right now, it is a 30 hour a week position. And um, I was requesting that it get increased to a 33 hour a week position. Is that our job? Or is that a select thing? Well, the person I'm going to pass has made a recommend. It's a recommendation on okay. either one. So, yeah. Okay, we'll do the $34 an hour first. Okay, was there any other discussion on the motion we have on the floor? Hearing none, I'll do a roll call vote. Susan? Aye. Joyce? Aye. Betty? Aye. Tom? Aye. And myself? Aye. That passes. Now we'll go on to the other request of the additional three hours. Okay, so I my in my memo. Um, so currently I'm actually a 40 hour a week position because I also hold the town clerk position at 10 hours a week. Um, so these this the 30 hours is a little bit. I'm here all the I'm here when we're open to the public, which is Mondays from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Tuesday through Thursday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, so I, I do think that the treasure collector job um, could benefit from additional three hours a week. There's a lot that goes into it. Um, I also think on a customer service um, part of it that I'm, I'm well-versed to be able to at least make have the resident not leave feeling like they didn't get an answer to their question or not um, feeling like their needs weren't met. Um, so I, I feel that with my town clerk experience and also with the treasure collector position, um, I can at least get information from them that they're requesting. And if they can't get as much detail as they need, I can pass them along to the appropriate department that can. Um, so if that's really where I'm coming from, from going from 30 hours a week to 33. Um, and I, I also feel that the workload could justify the, the three additional hours. Is that going to put her into overtime? Oh, I'm sorry. I can clarify that. Let me clarify. Um, on March 28th, um, I plan on resigning from the, the town clerk position. Um, so that 10 hours will, will be, will be done. I will only be in the treasure collector role. Okay. Um, so that is a decision that I have made and, um, should be on this select board's agenda for their next meeting. Um, so that's where we stand. With okay. That. Yeah. You don't want to be paid. Right. So that, that takes, you yeah, that takes care of that. That's pretty important. Adam. As long as you can justify it, I don't see that that's a problem. I certainly can, and I I, I don't think there's any time where I, I won't be doing something. Okay. Make a motion we change it from 30 to 33 hours a week. Okay, I, a, okay, I have a motion made and seconded to increase the hours from 30 to 33 hours per week. Any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll do a roll call. Susan? Aye. Joyce? Aye. Betty? Aye. Tom? Aye. And myself, aye. So that passes unanimous. Um, and then the next thing on next thing with you is you want to about your vacation pay? Oh, uh, you want to yes, you yes, want to go out that. and come back in, or <laughs> no? So um, so this is a tough one, and I I would love to we can discuss it more. Um, so I've been and I've, I was started my employment with the town in July of 2018. 
So for three years, um, till July of 2021, I was the administrative assistant and I would accrue sick time and vacation time. When I was um, elected into the town clerk position, that since the salary position, you do not accrue sick and vacation time. So I was paid out for hours um, that I had for vacation time um, under my administrative assistant position and, came and, and had, had nothing for the last year and a half. So it was kind of like a give and take in that position. Um, so now as I move into the treasurer collector position, I'm starting my balance at zero. And um, I would I would prefer not to do that. Um, so in July of 2023, I will be I will have five years in as the, an employee as the town employee. And here um, in our personnel policy, the length of service for a five year employee vacation uh, vacation time is 120 hours and sick time is 80 hours. That's where I would like to start July 1st. Um, I don't want to set a price. It would be prorated, though. Now, what do you mean? What do you mean by that? Prorated based on forty hours a week down to thirty. Oh, def yes, certainly would. Yep, right. definitely. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know how I, I understand your point too. I don't know how to deal with this situation I, because I did use sick and vacation time under the town clerk position too, but. There were times that I did work over the hours that, so it's so that it's, like it's, comp, a, it's tough. I don't know. Yeah, I yeah. think that I can. In my years with the town, we encountered once was an employee that was working in the highway department. The town laid him off because of Prop Two and a Half, and then years later he was hired back. The town gave him his years of service back. From that standpoint, that's basically what she's so asking. It's yeah. very similar. Huh? Yeah, I mean, and she's yeah. it's it, you know part of me says she she was the administrative assistant and then she was the town clerk and now right. she's, she's technically been an employee or been I understand the logic and it's not like she left to go to the private no. sector on her own and came back. <laughs> which to me makes more sense that, but I don't know whether it's the right thing to do or not, because I don't want to set a precedent for down the road. But if we were to set a precedent, the precedent would be for someone who has been continuously employed it, it's sort of a, I don't know what the, the right word is, but it, the fact that you were taken off that because you went into salary and going back, but you were consistently on payroll the entire time. So that can be the precedent that if somebody is continues to be on payroll, it's really a bookkeeping thing of which column you're in. As long as the cycle doesn't get broken, like you don't leave and go to the private sector and then come back after five right. years, or something. I guess it's now another scenario, and, and I don't know the answer at the moment, but just thought came to my mind is somebody like Bill Smith. Bill was a elected official on a school committee for years and years, and then became the, the water superintendent. Yeah. Did he get those years of service? Uh, I do I not don't know. know as being as elected. I mean, it's mm. I don't. I, don't I think know. there's a there's a big difference between serving on the school committee, which is yeah. not anywhere near full time employment, right? Um, and someone who's working, uh, let's say thirty plus or minus <coughs> hours right. in in a position like the town clerk. And um, I, I think that's it, maybe we have to do it on a case by case basis. But I, I had one question: um, if we did not do this, it's basically the number of days per year, not whether you can have vacation days like from the from the start, right? It's really just the days per year um, that is under question here, right? Yeah. It's not yeah. like. She, she has to start all over from scratch. 
as a like a new employee would. You're just asking not to be treated like a new employee since you have been certainly, I think all this time, more than half time, the whole time you've been there. Um, yeah, I've always- I remember uh, at the beginning, but I thought even at the beginning for being an administrative assistant, you were there more than half time. Yeah, I was 24 hours a week as the administrative assistant and mm -hmm. I've been nothing less than 24 hours a week. Yeah. I yeah, that's, a, that's very different from a school committee elected position. I didn't realize that the uh, the um, the the sorry the the town clerk position was treated differently in that way. So um, this is all new to me. I would have just assumed that you're continuously employed through and whatever um, sick and paid time off um, that anybody gets at that point, it would be what she would get. So it, you're not asking for something that's outrageous in my opinion. I think if Bill were here asking for that, that would be outrageous. <laughs> so, I, but I, I don't think he has, right? I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that he has done that, but I don't think we make the precedent be, if you go from an elected position to a, a staff an hourly position that that's the thing that we're talking about somebody who's been uh better than half time employed here for five years and how would we treat that person if that transition to salary hadn't happened regardless of whether it's elected right it's really a transition from salary uh, and then back to hourly yes yeah. yep And right. well, maybe Lynn is, I see Lynn on here. Lynn, has this part ever happened to you before? Um, well, you don't get to accrue the vacation and sick time, but it is tracked still. I mean, you, mm -hmm. you get the equivalent of what every hourly employee would get on paper. Yeah. Um, but technically it's not, um, a, you you aren't accruing it, but if mm. you went and as a, a salaried employee decided you were going to take two months off, I think people would frown upon that. So, mm. <laughs> um, so we always, you know, I always stayed in the same um, mm. amount of time that a, an hourly employee would yeah. would be. Oh. So, yeah, well, maybe going forward, we should also further address this. In the aspect that yeah, I don't the, know how many times you're going to run into this. But probably not many. The next town clerk is at the moment is still going to be elected. Yeah, and mm -hmm. working more than twenty hours a week and be yeah. looking at benefits as well. So we are doing a review now of the personnel policies, and maybe this is something we can ask to be a part of that. Yeah, that's or a good look thought. for that to be addressed in in, in that work. I do know of certain towns that have set up in their personnel policies to include the salaried positions. So it's not mm -hmm. unusual. And I think you'll find that you'll, whoever you're having do your personnel policies would have some experience with that. Yep. Okay, somebody care to make a motion? I make a motion that she gets to keep her all her time. How you know? How <laughs> to, yeah. It's a little, little confusing, but right. Well, maybe the motion could be that we continue to treat Amy as a five-year employee now that she's been here for five years. I'll say. But I think Amy, Amy, I, Amy, I thought you said that was as of July. I will be. Yeah, July. Um, of this year, I will be here for five years. Yes. Yeah. But we should also just make whatever your date of hire in July of 2018 should be your anniversary date going forward. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I seconded Joyce. <clears throat> okay. I have a motion made and seconded. Do we have any other discussion? Hearing none, we'll do a roll call. Susan? Aye. Joyce. Aye. Betty. Aye. Tom. Aye. And myself. Aye. So I pass you in this. Oh, yeah. Thank you.
Next item is Lynn. Lynn, with the request for a stipend for her training of a new position, a new <laughs> for. Okay, I think you've gotten my memo. Um, yes, just um, right now, I have been appointed as the assistant treasurer collector. Uh, so my salary right now is I'm working 18 hours a week um, at $25.22 an hour. Um, my request is that during training time, which I estimate to be about maybe eight hours a week with Amy, that I get a stipend plus the rate that she is making uh, for those eight hours. It, it's a little, I'm training someone and getting less money than they are. So oh. I, I just think it's justified that I should uh, uh, get a stipend, but I am only asking for it for like eight hours because many times I'll just explain something to Amy, how to go about doing something and then she works independently doing it. So it's not that I'm training her those whole 18 hours a week that I'm working. I'm there to have, she asks questions of me, I'm there for her, I'm doing payroll, I'm doing other things as the assistant treasurer collector. But um, for those actual training hours, I I would like, and boy, and I just uh, hit the gold mine here because you just approved. <laughs> well, so, I don't know if uh, I described it as a gold mine, Lynn. Don't get <laughs> So anyways, that's the, my reasoning. And also um, I'm thinking that this would be eight hours until July because it cycles in the treasure collector uh, job that by the by July 1st, we should hit all of those cycles, except maybe tax taking. We should get through tax taking, but we'll see. Um, and then after July 1st, I'd go down to the regular assistant uh, treasurer collector for the whole period of time. So we're just talking from the March 1st to um, June 30th, basically, for this increased time. I'll, okay. I'll just add that I, this is like Lynn's parting gift, because I'm not sure how we would get the training done for this if, amount of money, to be quite honest. If Lynn just walked away and said, you guys are on your own, then right. <clears throat> yeah. how we, um, I don't, maybe I shouldn't say that while Lynn's listening, but um, <laughs> I mean, yeah. that's, that's the truth of it, is yeah. I don't know how yeah. we would get the training done. Exactly. Yeah, she's got all the knowledge, so I think it's a no-brainer. Yeah, I make a motion we approve the eight hours at, and it's going to be uh, like thirty-eight dollars an hour, right? Thirty-four, thirty-nine, nine, nine. <laughs> like thirty-nine, whatever it is. Yeah, and with the, the uh, her base rate going up to the same as Amy's, which we just voted to be thirty-four. Right. I'll second that. Okay. I have a motion made and seconded to raise that pay up to 39 for the duration until June 30th. Any other questions, comments? Hearing none. Roll call vote. Susan? Aye. Joyce? Aye. Betty? Aye. Tom? Aye. And myself? Aye. Okay. Can I ask you a question, Lynn? Yeah. Uh, this whole water department billing thing, how are they surviving if they're not taking in any money? I know they have the enterprise fund, but that, that's got to be getting depleted. Uh, they they have taken in all their, their fees, their hookup fees of five thousand oh, dollars for each of those so they're cut but that was that was kind of designed to pay off the loan yeah, so the but they're using that now to okay. get them by and then once um the billing comes in it will kind of offset are so, you confident that this billing is going to get squared away here well they're soon? almost done um, it's just now a matter of getting Wayne trained on his equipment and me trained on, on ours, and then we'll be billing. So as long as we can get the bills out 
within the next couple of weeks, we should be good to go for this year. Okay, thank you. Yeah. May I clarify something, Keith, or um, Tom? Tom made the motion. Tom made the motion. Right. Joyce, but then Joyce. But it, you said for duration. Is it retroactive to March first? Oh, because March first was when she uh, retired. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. I, think I guess yeah. it's got to be. I think that would make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Retro Agreed. Okay. I have an agreement with Susan and Joyce Betty. Yeah. Okay. We're up, we all agree on that. So yes, thank you. Thank you. I just wanted it to yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Len. Yep. Next item on the agenda is a request from the fire chief. Incoming fire chief. Incoming. Potential. 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 <laughs> I thought we uh, voted on that. Hmm. We have um been told by the select board that they've appointed U.S. Fire Chief. So and yes. I know you have some back in June something. Seventeenth, I think, or mid June. Um, yeah. So thanks for giving me the opportunity to, to talk for a moment. Um, one of the concerns that I have coming in um, as an incoming fire chief is that we really have our work cut out for us to kind of bring the department up to um, current. Um, standards and uh, expectations. Um, things are, have changed a lot in the last 20 years, and the workload is steadily increasing for chief fire officers. Um, we've got a lot more responsibilities, and one of the things that I'm looking at coming in is doing some restructuring and coming up with training plans and inspection plans and such. While looking at the job description. Uh, the job description is for 20 hours a week and the pay scale, uh, the, the, um, the wage is $10,200. So divided out that comes to under $10 an hour somewhere in the, I think it's like 960 an hour or something like that. Um, I put together a spreadsheet for you to kind of take a look at. You know, copy it out on the internet. Yeah, yeah. 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 have a copy. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. We should be all set with that. Do you? Does, do you need to share that for Susan? Yeah, we have an email version that you can send us. That would be great. Or if Brian um, has an email version. I do. Can you? Yeah, it that? depends. It, it, was that email it, it was included. It was included. Oh, was in the previous email? Let yeah. me go. Okay. Even even better. I found the salary survey Excel file. It's an Excel file. No, PDF. that's a yes. Yeah. What I sent was a PDF. Yeah, that's what I saw was PDF. Okay, I'll keep looking for it. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, yeah, I'm not saying it. It was in the same email that had the. I could resend it to you, Brian, if you want. Let me pull it up. Okay. Like, what's the name of the file? That's that's what I got. Oh, that's yeah. right now. Well, it's not. I, well, I, I would have sent it. something different. Fire chief wage comparison. Okay. So, but that but that would not have been sent to you. Okay. Oh. It was in the PDF with all the other um, memos. All the stuff that we've already done through our yeah. Right. It is personnel. This is so it was an email of. Hold on, my thing's going. Uh, Monday, the 20th, 1256 p.m. The file name is personnel request received for 03 22 I have two emails from you on Monday. Personnel request received. Yeah. Um, that's Amy's. 
Keep going, keep going. Scrolling. It's page five, six. Wow, got it, got it, got it. Yeah, I'm with you. Okay. All right, all right, go ahead, JP. Okay, so it's basically just a comparison of some comparable um, towns, similar population um, in Franklin County. Um, much of the data was compiled from the BRCOG survey, um, FY22. I'll do that here too if somebody wants to take a look at that. Um, I'll just read to you a, a, a portion of the, the email that I sent out to, um, to Brian. Uh, the current salary of $10,200 equates to just under $10 an hour. Attached is a spreadsheet listing pertinent data from surrounding Franklin County towns of similar population. I did not include Waitley in the average um, the hourly average for the fire sheep rates because it's somewhat of an outlier. The average rate is calculated for the six departments that list how many hours the chief is expected to work. There was also an average fire chief salary calculated for the 13 fire departments um, in the spreadsheet. Note that some of the departments offer a stipend as the salary with the opportunity to earn an hourly rate. So it's it's kind of hard to compare um, every town in Franklin County because they have different uh, structures for, for um, paying the fire chief for their time. But realistically, uh, there is easily 20 hours worth of work that needs to be done. Um, it's probably going to be times where there'll be a lot more than 20 hours a week. Um, some of these departments, as you can see, they have um, a salary for the assistant fire chief as well, or the deputy fire chief, however they, they're structured. Uh, so some of that could be compiled as well for, uh, for comparison's sake. I'm requesting uh, $30 an hour. Uh, which would bring the fire chief salary up to, um, I believe it's um, $31,200. And that puts it at $30 an hour, which is $3 an hour less than the average of the six departments that um, I'm comparing them to. I think it's pretty reasonable um, for the workload. Um, as far as qualifications go, I am uh, credentialed through the Department of Fire Services as a credential fire chief. Um, I do have a bunch of certifications. Um, you know, obviously, I've got um, firefighting experience. I've been the uh, the fire department since 1988, 1989. I'm currently a captain. I've been a career firefighter for 21 years in Amherst. I'm a captain there. Um, you know, I think you'll be, be getting a pretty good return on the investment for for the um, the salary. Um, if anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. The one thing that I just, uh, I know our job description says you 20 hours a week. Mm -hmm. The one thing that has never been, to my knowledge, is that that, that that then becomes a benefit. It's a benefited position, which is entitled to prorated benefits as far as sick time and Vacation. Also, health insurance. Qualify for health insurance. So, county retirement. But is 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 there a difference? Because that's when I. So it's a, I'm not a stipend, right? I'm it's a stipend, not a salary. Okay, I'm just questioning. I don't know. That's I'm questioning it. That's, that's my. That's a great question, but I don't and I don't know the answer. My understanding is that it's it is a stipend position. Okay. But it it, it does say twenty hours. It says something, there's the exact language about in the job description about, about expecting to, do you have it? I, um, I can pull it up. Expect I believe it did say 20 hours or something out of there. That's not a new number. I believe it's in there. That was, but I'm just questioning that aspect of. And then my understanding of, of the current the way that it's set now is that it's the stipend plus, right? It's the stipend plus call, plus call right? Yeah. I was going to say, I did it set up now. It amazes me that John was doing this for ten thousand two hundred a year, but when he goes on a when he went on a call, he got paid. Correct. Okay. Now, is JP going to get paid? The regular uh, for work schedule uh, it states the regular work schedule requires approximately twenty hours per week. In the job description. 
That was the original. Well, job just the question is, uh, when you go on calls, does that come out of that 20 hours a week, or is that? Sure. Uh, I mean, I think, I, I don't know what the past history has been. Um, I've really been in a position to um, to be uh, party to what's part, going on. Part, part, yeah, you know, and and um, honestly, Neither of we. I think if if I'm, I feel like if I'm salaried at 20, uh, 20 hours per week, um, unless there were some extraordinary circumstances uh, that, you know, caused me to, to be working 40 hours a week because of some state of emergency for prolonged periods of time, I wouldn't expect to be paid for calls. I would just consider that part of the 20 hours per week. Okay. Um, the same thing for inspections. I think, you know, inspections are part of that. It's part of the job description. The way that I, I read the job description, that would be part of the salary. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I would not see myself collecting an hourly rate um, okay. per call. I just want to understand it because I, I mean, uh, with that, then we might have a, some idea of Certainly. basically it looks like a really big jump, right? Why? If um, it, you know, to go to uh, uh, like a much bigger like yearly um, salary or stipend, whatever it is we're going to call it. Um, but if there's another budget line that's going to go down in response, then that's important to to know, right? <laughs> I think it's going to go down, but the the, the line it might not item, balance out. But yeah, it, the, the there line is, item for some of it is off. The fire department is not that big. Yeah, yeah. Might so some of this nine, increase is, is going to be offset by thousand, not nine thousand separately for calls. Yeah, yeah. For for FY uh, twenty two, uh, nine thousand six hundred eighty one dollars thirty two cents for um, yeah all the, for salaries. Um, not including the fire chief, um, ten thousand two hundred dollars. Right. So the total um, department salaries line item is nineteen thousand eight hundred eighty-one dollars. Right. So. Okay. What can I? What you, uh, yeah. Go ahead, Susan. Yeah. No, I wasn't saying anything. I I oh. just was going to say oh. from a treasure collector standpoint. I think because the job description listed at 20 hours, it would be a benefited position. So he would be offered insurance and everything else. Not that he, I, I don't know the JP situation, but um, he may not take those benefits, but it is something that would be offered uh, because it is in the job description. How do we get below? We have to change the job description, or do we just have to get below twenty hours? Or you both? would, but then I don't. Yeah. I don't feel you're justified. You're then it is justified in the aspect that the workload. Uh, I really feel he's going to be easily putting in that amount of hours, if not more. Mm -hmm. I don't. Well, job. that's my concern that if he puts in more than and then we get audited for our payroll records and we haven't been offering the benefit package, it could create a problem. Right. And you see how lever it's getting around it with 19 hours per week. Yeah, that's, uh, what, that's how most of them get around that. But <laughs> but, uh, but if it's really if you're going to be consist an consistently chief. working more than yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. I so know. I just wanted to bring that to your attention because I, the job description does right. say 20 hours. For, for what it's worth, I, I don't, I can't afford to leave my current job. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I, you know, I, I figured mean, it well, wasn't going to be um, that type of uh, issue. But I mean, there is the fact that you would get vacation sick, that kind of stuff as well. So. Yeah, I, I do. I do get. Um, insurance through my full-time job and I right. plan on um, keeping, it. keeping that for <laughs> as long as I'm a full-time employee, which is, I don't see that changing anytime in the you know, very near future. And I don't think it's more an issue of your situation. It's going forward that right. should, I, should something change in your life where you resign and then the next person coming in, it will, it will be I think going forward, the realistically, the number of hours 
um, in the job description will go up. That will have to go up. Right. Um, the workload, like I said, is is steadily increasing, and um, not doing the work uh, becomes an increased liability for the town um, on many levels, and um, it really opens the town up um, if the work doesn't get done. It, it's it, there's a, a significant uh, open opening for liability if something goes wrong. Um, many of the surrounding towns are going to full time positions. Um, I don't know that we're there mm -hmm. right now, um, but I would say it's certainly a, a twenty hour week position. Yeah. What do you think the opportunities are for? Um, do you think that there's revenue possibilities that aren't being collected currently in terms of inspection and things like that? I don't help offset this. I don't. I. Honestly, I don't know what's being collected for inspections. I know that there are, there isn't an opportunity for, if we're not doing so already, things like 26 app inspections where, you know, uh, transfer ownership or new home. Um, mm. uh, you know, our, when we do a fire department inspect, inspection, we can't charge for that. Um, you can't. We can't. Um, yeah. And I don't, is that something we're doing right now? I have a double check. Just to throw it in my head. That is one of the things that I'm, you know, I have to um, uh, familiarize myself with, with the current fire chief and how, how things are progressing right now. These are collected for tank removals. Yeah. Um, doing all that stuff. The Oak detector and propane, uh, oil burners. Yeah, those kind of yeah. inspections. But to do a, like a sporadic or you know, an annual inspection of a business per se, no, I think we can, that would be um, and you know, it, it, I think there's potential. Um, I don't see it as being a huge, no, I'm mean, a huge money maker for the town, but certainly um, it, it could offset the costs of, of some things. And it, and it's not out of the norm. I think it's something that many communities are doing. Yeah. And I also um, feel that you're, you had made a comment about doing um, office hours. Yeah, the public. I know it will, yeah. not, it will be on a rotating schedule based on your full time job, but that's yeah. My my plan is to be at the accessible um, once a week, you know, and have office hours somewhere at the, the fire station probably, and um, make that figure out a way to make that public, like either on the fire department. Um, we have a, a link through the town's website or. I don't know how we can do it. I don't see that in the scoop. A big challenge can know. be we can put it on the our web. Our but it would, it would be you know it would be something that would be uh, rotating and um, you know that would increase accessibility. There is you know, there there will be accountability for the number of hours, and I think it'll be apparent what you're getting. It's probably long overdue. Mm -hmm. so. Anybody else have any more questions for JP? Or we I make a motion we raise the fire chief salary to thirty-one thousand two hundred dollars a year, which is thirty dollars an hour. And we'd like I'll second to, that. We're gonna call it 20 hours a week. Okay. Yeah. All right. And at the same point in time, you just Start tracking your hours and yeah. Let's do it. Let's see how. Yeah, I mean, I, I I think I I tried to make that clear um, in the beginning when we were talking about the fire chief position. The first year is really, um, it's a transitional year. It, it's there's a lot of stuff that we're going to try and implement. We have um, some plans for some significant changes and how things shake out with the number of hours and um, the the fire department salary line item. I'm not exactly sure where it's going to end up. I can try and predict some of it, but I can't right. know for sure until we get there. Um, obviously, we're going to try and be responsible about it, but we'll have uh, better information and better data um, a year from now. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Yeah, I just have a question oh. to clarify. Um, so are we saying that the, the stipend is that amount? Or is it an hourly amount? And are we adding 
uh, calls on top of whatever you're going to approve. No, I think that for my the way I want it worded is it's a stipend of thirty one thousand two hundred a year, twenty out which is twenty hours a week, and that will include calls. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I mean, and and I understand. But if if you work thirty hours because we had two big fires or something, well then. Or we have some rail incident that's just taking up. Yeah, kind of, there's, right. there's, there's million, all kinds of things, a million things, and and I think that would be a special. You know, the uh, the fire department budget is one of the, it's like the highway department. The finance committee looks at it as it you know mm -hmm. winter roads we can overspend and then we just put money in. If we've always trying to try to keep the fire department. You know, well, one of the funded, but if something goes wrong and they need more money, yeah, you're not going to get an argument. We're yeah. just going to give you more money. One of my concerns about stipend versus a salary, and I don't have the answer for it. I was hoping that somebody here would have the answer. Is I don't know how that affects Franklin County, my Franklin County retirement, because I I am vested in Franklin County retirement from my years of being the ambulance director, yeah, um, and being a firefighter prior to that. Um, that would be a question one. for Lynn. So I think before, <laughs> yeah. before once a member of Franklin County Retirement, always. always a member. So you you would have Franklin Regional Retirement taking out taken out of your pay, whether you were ten hours or your stipend or, or whatever, it doesn't matter. You would have uh, County Retirement taken out. Okay, so if we if if we use the word stipend versus salary, what doesn't matter. What implication does that carry? Anything at all? Now, I mean, Franklin County is uh, retirement aside. So, um, oh, yeah. What other um, implications might it have? Individual lump sum, regardless of how many hours you work, right? But shouldn't, right. shouldn't that add to what he's having paid by the town of Whaley will be added to in with Amherst and they'll combine the two together? Yeah. They will do that at retirement time. They right. used to combine everything. Uh, well, in JP's situation, it's a little different because he's actively in both of them. Um, but if he retires from Amherst or whatever, then um, and stays in Waitley, then he would his retirement could be transferred to Franklin County. So there's a whole bunch of he probably is best to talk to both of the county retirements. Or Amherst retirement and um, or Hampshire and yeah. Franklin um, to determine which is the best route to take. But um, as far as whether it's called a salary or a stipend or hourly, it's all going to have the same retirement taken out. Okay. Well, we would have somewhat had to deal with that with John because he's retired from Amherst but was still collecting county retirement. Um, but John is less than 20 hours. Okay. So um, he would, he actually has OBRA, I believe, taken oh. out yeah. rather than county retirement. No, he must have county retirement. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I have, I'd have to check on that because <laughs> once you're in county retirement, you're in county retirement and he's worked in, with the fire department for years. So he probably yeah. still has retirement taken out. I think did did he take a leave, a brief leave from the department before after he retired? I don't know. I would have to ask him. I don't yeah. know. I'd have yeah, I'm not sure. I don't have my payroll up and running here, so I can't uh tell you and what I, he actually has taken out right now. I don't want to drag it out any more than we have to. I just want to be sure that if, if we use the word stipend that it doesn't carry implications that might affect my my retirement um, or benefits um, personally. So, um, so there's you. You want it to say salary, or you you don't know. I don't. I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm comfortable with the word salary. Is 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 fine um, by me, but you know, I trust the personnel committee. He talk to Dale. It. You should talk to probably Dale Kalaki from. Yeah, maybe just vote it one way, and then if you need to change, need to change yeah. it, yeah, let's vote it as a stipend, and if we have to change it, we'll change it to salary. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what the um, 
the definition per se of stipend versus salary. Stipends are usually lower than a sal. You know, your stipends are what the select board gets for their monthly stipend. Um, Usually when you get up higher, it's somebody who's an active employee and it's more of a salary than it is a yeah. stipend, but. So it might just be word choice without pretty, a meaningful yeah. difference. Yeah, I, I yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great, okay. Well, let's vote it one way. And then if we find out later that there's some difference that you are able to find, then we come back and, and vote it the other way if that's necessary. I, I think the stipend, like the way that I read the spreadsheet from FERCOG was that it kind of, to me, it seems like there's chiefs that maybe get a stipend in an hourly rate on top of that, right? Um, whereas I think oh, I that I'm just asking for straight up salary, for a salary. Well, then I would move that we just adopt the term salary since that's oh. kind of what it is. And it's not going to be like the previous chief which had who had a stipend and then stipend got paid for calls as well. That might help clarify things when people in around town who happen to know what the old system was, it might let them help distinguish those. I have I'm a question. A question from the John Peter yes. Gallery. So if he wants to be 20 hours a week at $30 an hour. Why don't you just put him as an hourly employee and just pay him? 20 hours per week, then you don't have to get salary or stipend. And it'll come out to the same. But it's still going to need counter retirement. I don't know. I just don't another know. thought. I'm just on the peanut gallon back here. <laughs> <laughs> what do you what do you think of that, Lynn? Um, I don't frankly, I think no matter how you word it, it's going to result in the same thing. He's going to get paid a certain amount. Um, yes. It can be hourly. I mean, it can be, he's going to be paid a certain amount and that's that. I mean, I guess the question lies in if he works, say, 15 hours one week and then works 30 hours the next week, then maybe yeah. the stipend is a a, you know, say a one pay period a month is less work than, say, the ending pay period, then the stipend might be the best thing because it would be an equal pay every yeah. pay period. Whereas if it was hourly, he'd be keeping track of all of his hours mm -hmm. and say, like I said, if one, one um, pay period was 15 hours, he'd only get paid that amount. And then yeah. the next period would be 35. So Right. It's yeah. I like him six working of one, one half dozen of another. <laughs> I, let's just go with the, the, I mean, he asked for the word salary. Um, let's go with that. And uh, I'd rather have him working on, I don't know, maybe figuring out problems and collecting data as a fire chief rather than trying to fill out his time sheet correctly for whatever we <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so, right. so okay, you want me to change the motion to let's, salary? Let's get this motion clarified. We haven't had a second on it. We had only had your original motion. All right, I'm going to change my original motion clarified. from stipend to salary. Okay, and it is still going to be based on the 31. Yeah, I'm 31, 200, 20 hours a week. Okay, and you got that, got it. Amy? Or... Okay. Second. Now we have a motion made, seconded, and seconded by Joyce. Any other discussion? Hearing none, a roll call vote. Susan? Aye. Joyce? Aye. Betty? Aye. Tom? Aye. And myself, I'm abstaining since I'm currently an officer in the department. So it passes. I have a question okay. because there was a motion that was seconded already, but it wasn't voted on. I see the jury's The one about stipend. Joyce, um, motion to change the language, salary from stipend and Susan seconded it, but you didn't oh. vote, so I don't know how. Oh, um, I'll withdraw the motion. Withdraw. Thank you. Okay. 
we need to have a vote on that, or are we good on that? Yeah, good. good. Okay. Sorry. Nope, that's fine. That's procedure. Okay. Um, that takes care of that aspect of it. JP, you're still on the floor. All right. Uh, the next request that I had was to increase the uh, hourly wage and by means of a differential for fire officers. Um, when we have fire calls, um, we have varying levels of responsibility based on um, the firefighters or the officers' um, ranks. We have lieutenants on the fire department, two lieutenants. We have two captains, uh, two deputy chiefs, um, all working under uh, the authority of the fire chief. Um, the fire chief is not on every call. So when the fire chief is not on a call, that responsibility is delegated to the officers and they're expected to make uh, command decisions. Um, at a fire scene, we might, or an emergency, we might expect a lieutenant to be in charge of um, two or three people. And the captain might be in charge of um, two lieutenants, each with their um, subordinates working, uh, working with them. Because of that, um, most departments uh, offer some type of an increase in pay um, corresponding to the level of responsibility. And I'm requesting a dollar an hour for the lieutenants, the two lieutenants, uh, $2 an hour for the two captains, um, and $3 an hour for the two deputy chiefs. Typically, um, most calls we won't have um, two lieutenants, two captains, and two deputy chiefs on. So I don't think it's really going to impact the salary all that much, but I think it is uh, appropriate um, to reward them uh, for their increased responsibility. <coughs> they have additional training for certifications at these levels? Um, typically, those roles are filled by the people with the most experience um, and the most education. Um, currently, I don't believe that there is a mandate for our fire officers to have um, certain levels of fire education, but typically they do have more fire education than um, people that um, they're supervising. And moving forward as the um, incoming fire chief, that is one of the things that I want to work on is more training for our officers um, so that they can better uh, deal with the responsibilities that they have. Um, I don't think it's going to be that much of an impact on the budget. Um, again, this is one of those things where I, I struggled for a way to compile some numbers so you could see exactly how much it would impact the budget, but without knowing exactly. It's um, not the same every year, change. It's not the same every year, but without knowing exactly um, how many hours each of our officers um, was recompensed last year, I can't tell you. Um, <laughs> what you said your last fiscal year, the line was how much for the Sorry. Oh, um, 9,000, I thought you said. Oh, for the, yeah, without the, the for the firefighters, yes, it was nine thousand six hundred and eighty-one dollars. Ninety-six eighty-one, and I think the hourly. I'm just going to do them roughly how many hours. It's not trying to. What's the hourly rate? Do you remember? Does anybody know? It's it's well, so that should be right on. It should be right here. Right? Yeah. Fire, firefighters, eighteen seventy-three. Yeah. Right, or yes. we just raised them. Right, so that's five hundred hours between all of the a little over five hundred hours between all of the firefighters and officers and janitors, everybody, every. Mm -hmm. So just trying to put a. It's going to be minimal. It, it's going to yeah. be minimal. That right. Yeah. It's the only point I wanted to make. Yeah. All right, I make a motion. We raise the lieutenant's position a dollar an hour, captain two dollars an hour, and deputy chief three dollars an hour. Second. I have a motion made and seconded. Any other discussion, comments? Hearing none. Hey, Keith, Keith yes. can I just ask a quick question? 
um, will that be for those officers whenever they respond to a call or would it only be when they're doing those responsibilities? Because I'm just thinking from the payroll standpoint. When, whenever they're whenever they're on the payroll. Okay, because very good. I, that's all I want to... <laughs> I just yeah, wanted to clarify. Thank you. Responsibilities are the same whether they're by themselves or or with, with somebody else okay. or multiple officers. But yeah, good question. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I'll go back and we'll do a roll call vote. Susan? Aye. Joyce? Aye. Betty? Aye. Tom? Aye. And myself, I'll abstain from reason as the last vote. So it passes Florida. Nothing. Next item on the agenda. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other? Thank you, JP. Any other anticipated? No, I'm sorry. Personnel policy revisions. Brian, do you have anything to add to that? Um, well, we just mentioned that if at the next personnel committee meeting. When we were talking with the rep from HRS who's revising the personnel policy, said if we were gonna uh, want to flag any of the sections of the personnel policies that we wanted to focus on, we would talk about that at a well, we we addressed one tonight. Yeah, the personnel committee being right. The I wrote down lead time for salaried employees. So yep. And for me, I guess the biggest thing is that there's just been a lot of changes, I think, in the, even the past five years in terms of all different personnel policies related to things like cannabis in the workplace, um, things related to COVID. Um, and, you know, those are two that I wanted to make sure that we were up to date on. There's been a number of different acts, I think, that at least in the state of Massachusetts has passed. We also need to make sure that we're compliant with. Um, I would also think that as a consultant reads ours and is very familiar with what they do, they should be able to say, here's your weak spots. Mm -hmm. Things should stick out to that person very yeah. well as well. Yep. As far as like state mandated stuff that we're not covered or we're not dealing with it. yeah or, or not consistent with or yeah yeah um what about in terms of, of structural things in, in in that sense i mean like there's been concerns raised about the composition of the personnel committee do we want to ask questions about the, the composition that we have in the personnel committee the finance committee raised concerns about that the question we could ask the is that a a, per, a town personnel issue or is it more um I mean I know that the town passed a bylaw or whatever at town meeting of a personnel committee. Yeah. And there were Virtually no, you know, there were, it had to be somebody from the finance committee, somebody from the board of selectmen, and so on. Yeah. It, so, so it's part of the personnel policy. Okay. So it's going to be something that's, that's looked at. If I, I imagine it'll be looked at anyways, but I know that that's a concern that's been brought yeah. up that I've, that I've heard. So we could ask for ideas on what, whether what our structure is similar to other communities or. Are we doing something so different than the rest of them? Okay. Yeah, I think it wouldn't hurt to ask them to to uh, comment on that and kind of put it in perspective. And maybe mm -hmm. they'll have ideas for something that works better even um, and uh, and achieves the same kind of goals that we were going for when we did this bylaw, which was you know to have representation from various parts of town. So. I don't think it can hurt to get more information. Mm -hmm. Agreed. I agree. Okay. Um, questions about um, 
I'm not asking. I, I have. Uh, I want to say something. I'm not asking a question. Um, in terms of, we go through the annual. Um, you know, go through the annual salary recommendation process. We review wages and stuff like that. Um, it always seems to be. Uh, Contentious. It always seems to be contentious and difficult to get information. And I guess if there's a better, if there's a better method out there, I would love to hear about it. Um, it takes up a lot of time, and yeah. you know, communities are only so comparable. So um, I wouldn't mind if there's a better way to do it or something like that. If you have any, if they have any ideas. Mm -hmm. What about going to a step system? I would have not been in favor of that in the past, but the more I, we go through the struggle every year of, you know, raising people's because of these surveys and stuff, uh, and having talked to like listen to the school people, they have a step system, and when you get to the end of your step system, or where you know unless you further your education or whatever, get more qualified to do your job. That's it. Yeah. You get a cola, right. but that's yeah. it. It's kind of a way of saying that as you start a job and in the first N years, whether that's five years or 10 years or what, that yeah. you're actually getting better at doing your job. But an additional 10 years on top of the first 10 years is not making you better at your job. Because that's kind of the, I mean, maybe that's a crude way of putting it. And maybe well, it's not even true, but it seems like that's what it's it's rewarding. Kind of your first years when you are getting better and getting better. And then uh, at the point where you may plateau because, you know, how much more would there be to learn about that job? Then you're you're kind of, in that position of of uh, you're at colas and and that's I I see that's how the school works. In the end, I know there there's often discontent among people who've made it all the way up the steps that they're just getting colas. But um, right now, everybody's just getting colas, and we we don't have a a great way of acknowledging um, the the improvements that people make in their job performance by being there especially in the first, say, five years, 10 years. Mm -hmm. But does that mean that each department would have different steps? So that's going to make it harder? Or would mm -hmm. it should be one, should be years yeah. of service to so the job. It depends on how, yeah, I guess. See, in the teacher's thing, that's a different thing because you're right there, all of them are all grouped together. But in this, you know, it depends on each department, I would think, but you think it would be the same. I don't know, I'd like to see that. Yeah. See what yeah. the uh, I'm looking at the link to service, uh, how we pay vacation. And after 10 years, you or 10 years and over is you get four weeks vacation. So if we just for the sake of discussion, we tap this step thing at 10 years. Your, the only increase a person would get would be a COLA until they get to 20 years. Then they're going to get a, another week of vacation. They're going to get five weeks of vacation. And their sick time and sick time is capped at 720. So I don't you know, part of me says 10 years, you, you got to go beyond 10 years with the step, but I don't want it to go on forever and ever either. I, you know, unless you, if you're a teacher, you get certain steps. And then like when you get your master's degree, you get a pretty good step. But it, when you get your master's, you don't, your steps don't, uh, it, it's right. not like they add more years to your step. You you get a big jump, but it it still capped at right. what, what ten years or whatever it is. But but I also think we'd want something flexible enough to, um, to uh, recognize or reward 
like a situation that we had uh, and Lynn's right on here. So um, I, and I, and I may get some details wrong, but Lynn started out uh, as a, maybe an administrative assistant or a, a town clerk, assistant town clerk maybe, and then became town clerk. And then at some yeah. point was um, basically our town administrator. And so there's a, a bunch of names I'm probably forgetting in between. And then treasurer collector, like, so, so Lynn is an example yeah. of like, Every freaking year she learned something new that the town needed her to learn. And so I wouldn't want to have some really like overly burdensome, strict um, system where you can only get steps at a certain. And my guess is that the folks who are doing our personal policies will know about those and will know about systems that can work. Yeah, I don't want to put I don't want to put something into place that you know disincents our most experienced people from staying, that and from learning they, other things, right? Yeah, that they've yeah. plateaued out. They're just gonna either going to leave or just kind of you know phone it in because why bother? Right. There's yeah. no more growth. Well, if, in like in Lynn's case, where she she changed positions, like. Mm. I don't know. She she went. She became the town clerk after being something else. So she changed positions. In theory, she got a better job. So <laughs> this, our our system would have to be flexible enough. Yeah. So that if you change your position, then you start at the bottom of the steps. You know, you, you you negotiate your new rate of pay or whatever, however you want to call it, and then you're in the step system again. Right. We had a pay and uh, classifications uh, set up when I first started working for the town back in 2000. The it what it did it is analyzed every position and set them up into a grade. Um, I think there were multiple, I don't remember how many grades, but then each grade had steps. So say the treasurer collector was a grade five. Yeah. It started at a different uh, starting point than maybe uh, an entry position. You know, it, it, so there were several different grades and this is kind of answering uh, Betty's question about, you know, people having one system. This one had multiple grades so that you could differentiate between, you know, the janitor and the town administrator. You aren't going to start them at the same grade level. So um, they would be assigned a grade. And then depending on their experience, they would start, you know, would start towards the bottom of the grade and then work their way up. Sometimes if someone had a lot of experience, they may not have started at the bottom. They may have started at the you know, step four or something like that. I think there were 10 steps or something like that. But it, we did have the system. The problem was that Waitley is known to have long-term employees. So it did get to the top and people Pretty got quick. to the top of their grade very quickly. And there was no, no future anymore, you know, no uh, additional incentive to do anything more so yeah, it, wasn't um, main, it wasn't maintained either it wasn't maintained either that the scales weren't the steps weren't maintained because even in the teacher's contract i know that the steps get adjusted um every uh, every uh contract period so right. um you know it does it does need to be maintained throughout the years and that's what happened with the pay classification that we had set up originally, it was not maintained, so it didn't function well. The idea behind it was really good. It's just it didn't, um, it wasn't but it maintained. Might cost so. us something to maintain it. Yes. Um, somebody's got to do some work right. to right. maintain it. Like, and yeah. But like in my, I just like in my case, when I would reach the top, then, it, then all of a sudden, a few years down the road, when you looked around other towns, it was there was a drastic difference. It wasn't it wasn't even coming close to being paid what the other towns around because it wasn't being our step system didn't get maintained. It was flat. Yeah. And so that's what Lynn is talking about maintaining it. Yep. But I think we should at least 
it's it's probably as more the, complicated than I think. The, um, again, this should be something that they deal with on a regular basis. It should yeah. be very straightforward to the consultant to to give us some options. Yeah. The other thing that comes to mind is the social media policy. Yep. Mm -hmm. what can and can't do versus First Amendment rights in work outside of work. It's getting pretty complicated. Mm -hmm. So I, I think I, I'm very happy we have a firm that's done these a lot because I think we're going to need a lot. So um, I think it'll be good. So I would imagine that once we have, I think what we talked about was once once we have a draft then to circulate it with the personnel committee before bringing it into the draft board, maybe twice with the personnel committee, and then we'll go from there. So once I have something back from the, the consultant, then I'll reach out to everybody and we can set up a yeah. set up a time to review and I'll make sure there's plenty of time for people to review it ahead of time too. So will there be a, an opportunity where we have a meeting? In conjunction with the consultant, with the consultant, yeah, I, I think their first step was to was to talk with department heads, um, and myself, and have some interviews with the folks about the personnel policy, and then, yeah, then there would be a meeting with. Uh, I, I would imagine that I would imagine both of those meetings would be with the consultant. Um, I don't. Do you have any indication? I mean, more than likely, I'm assuming we would have to try to do it during the day hours, or you don't. Know? Uh, I don't know yet. Okay. Um, okay. But it's 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 well overdue. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So I'll share I'll share some of these some of the things that we talked about. That is. That's why you gave us a cover the sheet about the sick leave, right? That was what. Oh uh, well, it had more to do with Amy's question about. Okay. Um, yeah. Amy's right. question came down to the term, like leave. Right. Uh, okay. Length of service, right? Right. The yeah. question was whether length of service includes time as an elected employee, essentially. Mm -hmm. If not, then. Versus appointed. Right. It's really the difference between elected versus appointed. Right. right. That elected. It's, should count as years of service. In this case, we suggested that it would. So, right. Yeah. yeah I think certainly we, for, that, for jobs like that. Yeah. Change is that, you know, not just in Amy's case, but in anyone's case. But we'll clarify it. Yeah. <clears throat> or at least define the length of services, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, is there any. any Unanticipated items. Brian, do you have anything else? I do not. Okay. Anybody else? No. Nope. Take a motion to adjourn. Oh, go ahead. Susan? Aye. Right. Somebody... Did you have something, Susan? No, no. Oh. Okay, I thought it hurts. All right. We need to, what, what's our, can we set a next meeting yet or do we want to wait before we? Your back on the consultants. Okay. Yeah. All right. Then, if we don't need to set a meeting now, we'll entertain your motion. Tom. Second. There we go. <laughs> I have a motion made and seconded to adjourn. I will do a roll call. Susan. Aye. Royce. Aye. Betty. Aye. Tom. Aye. Myself. Aye. Thank you, everybody.